Okay, good morning. Our topic for today is shallow water effect that is under the week four uh, modules week four, okay? Shallow water effect. Now, what is a shallow water effect? When ships make a landfall from a deep sea position, they may experience a form of interaction with the seabed known as the shallow water effect. It is especially noticeable where the shoals and the change in depth becomes abrupt and may cause the ship's steering to be affected. The bows being pushed off course to either port or starboard as the vessel experience a sharp change in under keel clearance. Okay, or what we call the UKC. What are the main factors of squat? The main factors are the following. Existing water depth, vessel speed through the water, the block coefficient, steaming and shallow, and restricted or unrestricted water. So ito yung mga factors of the squat. Remember, the formula for the squat is, you can write it down, jot it down, gentlemen and ladies. Bla uh, squat in open waters is black coefficient times velocity squared over 100. Ulitin ko, that is the squat in open waters. While for the squat formula for restricted waters is the black coefficient times velocity squared over 50. Okay? <clears throat> The black coefficient of a ship is the ratio of the underwater volume of ship to the volume of the rectangular block having the same overall length, breadth, and depth. So the formula ng block coefficient, length, breadth, and depth. So there's the formula. Black coefficient, volume of ship displacement at present drop over volume of rectangular block at that drop. Or the formula for the volume of rectangular block is length times breadth times draft. <clears throat> blockage factor of the canal and narrow channel. Canals and narrow channels create a different scenario in a canal apart from having a shallow water beneath. Even the sideways water flow is restricted. This creates additional low pressure which affects the squat. But how do we know if the blockage factor exists or not? Blockage factor is a ratio of ship's immersed cross section to the cross section of water within the canal. So uh, underneath the water, uh, if your UKC uh, is uh, uh, lesser, then you will experience what we call the blockage factor. Nagkakaroon ng low pressure underneath it, meaning to say, mayroong low pressure, lalong nagkakaroon ka ng squat. Lalong dumidikit or lumalapit yung kill mo to the seabed. So that is the explanation of the uh, blockage factor. Blockage factor is equals to... Uh, Bread times height over bread times. Yes, bread times height. Uh, Black is 0.265 represents narrow channel. Uh, there's a link there. Makikita nyo YouTube slash wash, etc. etc. So, ang representation ng B uh, directly proportional to H, it's your beam. Okay, the beam of the vessel, multiply it to the draft of the vessel, okay, yung small letter H, over the uh, the width, the width of the navigating uh, water times or multiply to the uh, charted depth of the navigating water uh, with the letters capitalized, okay? Uh, for the blockage factor, gentlemen, actually, practically, we are not, uh, we are not uh, applying this, okay? We only calculate the UKC. Now let's go to the canal effects during ship handling may cause water level drops toward the bank, vessel heels towards bank to displace constant volume, varies as the square of speed corrective helm to be applied. It states that reduced speed should be used in shallow water and narrow channels to reduce shallow water effect and allow time to correct an unwanted shear. Why do vessels slow down in shallow water? Of course, ladies and gentlemen, that is to reduce the UKC. The shallow water and proximity of the sides of the channel effects of the ship navigating through the restricted waters, this decreases the upward pressure on the hull, making the ship sink deeper in the water than normal and slowing the vessel. This is known as the squat effect. Okay, ang tawag doon ay squat effect. So the more speed you have, the more shallow water effect you will encounter. So, yun yung tinatawag na squat. Okay? 
So ang ginagawa ng mga navigators is that we uh, reduce or even stop our vessel. Okay? So that we'll be able to increase our UKC. Now look on the diagram, shallow water effect and squat. Underneath the vessel, there's what we call the low pressure. If you are encountering, if you are encountering squat, then uh, there will be a low pressure underneath the vessel. All right. Shallow water. Shallow water is practically known as when the UKC distance will be equal or less than half of the vessel's draft. Okay, shallow water is practically known or it is defined as when the UKC distance will be equal or less than half of the vessel's draft. So for example, your draft is 10 meters and then uh, you are five meters or less UKC. That means you are already in a shallow water by definition of our uh, lecture. Or it is also known as when the water depth to drop ratio is equal or less than 1.5. Okay, 1.5. What is shallow water effect? The squat effect is the hydrodynamic phenomenon by which a vessel moving quickly through shallow water creates an area of lowered pressure that causes the ship to be closer to the seabed than would otherwise be expected. The squat is the reduction of a keel's vessel's clearance, a keel clearance caused by the relative movement of the ship's hull through the surrounding body of water. Compared with the neutral position, the hull sinks deeper into the water and at the same time will trim slightly. Trim. So ang trim, it is just the difference between the fore and aft drops. Okay? This is just the difference between the fore and aft drops. I'm sure you already know what is uh, what are drops. Am I right? <clears throat> Class? Yes, sir. All right. Now on the diagram, on the uh, vessels diagram, uh, there's what uh, there's what we call the uh, the waves effect. Okay. It, it is either you will be in, uh, experiencing hugging or sagging. Okay, you can find it out on your uh, on the on even the Google itself. Okay, when the uh, longitudinal stress is uh, located on the fore and aft ends, okay, with the midships deflected upwards, that means it is hugging. Okay, however, if your midships is uh, uh, is bended downwards, okay, and your fore and aft ends are deflected upwards, that means you are experiencing sagging, okay? Now, what, uh, do you have any questions about squat effect? Question number one, why and how does squat effect take place? Of course, you encounter this when you are in a shallow water or what we so-called shallow water effect. And of course, with the given speed, it will give you more squat because under kill, you will experience low pressure. What are the factors that affect squat? Sinabi ko na. How do we know if this squat will result, will result in a forward trim, up trim, or no trim? Okay, how do we know if squat will result in forward trim, up trim, or no trim? Normally, our echo sounder is located on, in the forward. Okay, kasi mas na maaaga niyang na detect or uh, na ibibigay yung information kung ilan na lang yung UKC mo. With that, if there's a shallow water right ahead, uh, mostly kasi ang vessel natin, it is trimmed by the stern. Okay, trimmed by the stern. So, mas malalim yung draft mo sa yung stern kaysa sa yung forward. Meaning, you have more risk of grounding in the aft than in the forward. How can we calculate squat? Well, I've given you the formula already. Have you taken it? Have you taken note of it? Class? Yes, sir. All right. 
What are the signs that shows vessel is, is experiencing squat? Of course, with the reduced draft and uh, reduced speed. Okay. If you are experiencing. Not yet, sir. Not yet. Okay. For that matter, kindly please take note, everyone. Squat in open waters. Okay. Squat in open waters. Formula is black coefficient times velocity squared over or divided by 100. Copy? While squat in confined or restricted waters is black coefficient times velocity squared over 50, five zero. Okay, did you all copy? Okay, moving on. In shallow waters, following effects. Yes. Okay, thank you. In shallow waters, following effects may be evident. Okay, ito yung mga ma experience natin in shallow waters. Sluggish movement, vibration, kasi you are at nav full, but then your engine is reduced, you are experiencing squat. Erratic steering, it, it is so hard for you to steer and it uh, there's a slow response from your rudder. Smelling the ground, meaning... Uh, your keel is already uh, almost touching the ground or even the mud. Okay, And then squat, bow cushion and bunk suction effect. Bow cushion, of course, you will experience this in a bow if there's an interference. Remember the word interference with the coast or the bulkhead of the terminal or bird. Now, bunk suction effect, okay, it is the suction from your stick. And also the canal effect. Lahat ng yan, ng interference na yan, there's an involvement of the low pressure in between the sides or the bottom of your vessel or even the bow. Okay, or even on the midship part, port and starboard side of the vessel, you call it the bunk suction effect. Meaning, uh, yung bunk suction na yun, ladies and gentlemen, it is that uh, if you are navigating or steering very near uh, the bulkhead of the coast, you will experience bunk suction. Bakit? Kasi katulad rin ng squat effect, nagkakaroon ng low pressure doon sa sides ng vessel mo. And with that, even if you put or you use your other, uh, you will experience bunk suction. Ibig sabihin, isasak ka, lalo kang didikit na yun. Okay? Moving on. <clears throat> Sluggish movement, na banggit ko na kung ano ibig sabihin nun. And also vibration, steering, erratic, smelling the ground, squat, I've given you the formula and, the, and then the other indications. Okay, vessel's draft increases depending on vessel speed. Vessel speed reduces slowly. Propeller and main engine loads will increase. So yung load ng makina mo lalong mag increase Trim by head will increase gradually. So you will experience trim by the head even though before you were trimmed by the stern. And of course, effectiveness of rudder and propeller will reduce. Turning circle will increase more than twice. So in a shallow water, your turning circle is much bigger than in open waters. And of course, stopping distance of ship will increase. So even if you stop your engines, okay, the stopping distance will increase farther. Okay, shallow water effect is as shown as follows. So in deep water, normally your turning circle will be like that. It is just about uh, four, four cables. But in shallow water, it will be about more than seven to nine cables. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, there's the exact formula. Okay, uh, by Dr. Barra's method. But the one, the, the, the formula that I've given you is the ones being used on board. Now, for the reference itself, you can just copy this, but I suggest using my formula that we are practically using on board, the one that I've given you. Uh, yung 30 kasi, tina mo, pareha sila na 30 and pareha sila in confined and open waters. That means this is wrong because you have more squat in shallow waters than in confined waters. 
Okay, uh, another formula for the blockage factor involvement, it is that mayroon siyang K, no? Let's skip this one. Okay, factors governing squat. Squat is directly proportional to the square of the speed. Sinabi ko na, uh, velocity squared, okay? And there's an involvement with the block coefficient. Yan. So yan yung tama. In open waters, it is uh, block uh, 2 times block coefficient times velocity squared over 100. Yung open waters niya, ladies and gentlemen, pares lang siya kung uh, hindi mo siya lalagyan ng 2 times block coefficient, pero over 50 ka, parehas lang sila ng equivalent. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, ito yung tamang formula. Okay? But better use my formula kasi it is very confusing with others other formula. No? Maraming nag-revise, maraming nag-gumamit ng ratio and proportion, but then in the end, much better kung ganun yung gagamitin natin yung katulad ng binigay ko. Alright, precautions. Squat may cause grounding in spite of enough UKC. Squat must be calculated before hand. Speed to be reduced to reduce squat while determining UKC, UKC squat for the speed to be taken into consideration. Why do we take, we have to put it into consideration? Kasi kasama yan sa passage planning. Sa passage planning, squat calculation or the UKC calculation is already given. Kasi lahat ng charted depths mo Along your course line, you will take the shallowest. Ibig sabihin, kukunin mo yung pinakamababaw from one waypoint to another hanggang mabuo mo yung passage plan which is from birth to birth. Malinaw? <coughs> Last? I can. Very yes, well. sir. Okay. Now we go to bow cushion and bank suction effect. <clears throat> uh, this occurs in narrow channels near proximities of banks. Okay, There's a tendency for the bow of the ship to be pushed away from the bank called bow cushion. Okay, Ang tendency is pinupush niya yung proa mo away from the bank. Okay, The ship moves bodily towards the bank which appears at the stern called bank suction. So pag sa stern naman, you call it bank suction. Ibig sabihin, Lalayo si Proa, didikit si Pupa mo sa bank. Velocity of water to the bank increases and pressure reduces. Kaya tinawag natin kanina na low pressure. Okay? It results in drop of water level towards the bank. As a result, a truss is set up towards bank. A vessel approaching to the bank will have to apply help to the bank and reduce speed to prevent the shear from developing. So what is the key? Apply the helm and, of course, reduce your speed when you are nearby or navigating along the bank. Okay, there's a picture of uh, bow cushion and bank suction effect. Do you all see this? Okay, canal effect. Water level drops toward the bank. Vessel heals toward bank to displace constant volume. Varies as a square of speed corrective helm to be applied. So, ganun din siya. No? Ship interactions when navigating in a channel. So, remember the term interactions. When navigating in narrow channels, the systems of water flow and water pressure will considerably increase. The ship will thus push water ahead of her and the surface of the water will rise Noticeably, several ships land ahead of the ship. Navigating close to the river or channel, how squat bank and bank cushion effects influence ships in restricted waters. When a ship moves through restricted waters, it has to navigate close to the shore and other man-made structures because of limited navigable width. The shallow water and proximity of the size of the channel effect of the ships navigating through the restricted waters these effects cause errors in maneuvering which can lead to grounding or collision. Okay, so there's an influence if you are navigating in restricted waters. That's why passage planning has to be done properly in order for you to calculate UKC in consideration with the speed and the shallow water effect or what we call the squat and even the bank cushion and the bank suction effect. 
Any ship, regardless of its size, navigating through restricted waterways is heavily affected by hydrodynamic effects. In this article, we will understand three of the most common effects experienced by ships, namely, yung binanggit ko before or earlier, squat, the bank cushion, and the bank suction effect. Okay, we'll skip that one. Bank effect, bank cushion effect. Okay. Now, as with bank effect, uh, we have got this, what we call the Bernoulli's principle or the Bernoulli theorem. It is the hydrodynamic explanation for squat. When water squeezes between the bottom boat or the vessel and the seafloor, an area of low pressure develops and the vessel sinks or deepens more or squats into it. Yet, yes, the same vessel actually rides deeper in the water. Now, that principle was named after Bernoulli or we called it Bernoulli's theorem. Okay, those are Bernoulli's rules. Maneuverability performance of the rudder can be described by three categories, directional stability, response, and slow speed maneuverability. The ability to continue to travel in a straight line with rudder amidships with no external pressure acting in the vessel or rudder. That means the directional stability. Controls fixed straight, straight line stability, a condition rarely achieved any condition other than the heading directly to the seats will alter the ability to continue straight. Directional stability. Longer ships are more likely to possess straight line stability. Short ships like tugs, small sport craft have poor straight line stability. To improve this, can increase dead wood of the ship. This is the part of the hull that exists in front of the rudder. An extension of the ship acts like the feathers on an NRO. So other vessels, noticeably, meron silang tinatawag na parang palikpik. No? Okay, if you have that, then you have better directional stability or what we call the deadwood of the ship. Makikita mo yan kapag naka-dry dock yung barko mo, you will see that at the bottom sides of the ship. Straight line stability. The ship responds to the disturbance by steadying on some new course. Okay. During response, the ability to turn the ship when the rudder is applied and to return the ship to the desired heading with minimal overshoot. The ability to turn the ship when the rudder is applied and to return the ship to the desired heading with minimal overshoot. When applied, the rudder must be able to change the orientation of the ship in a minimum set time. The ship must be able to return on course with, without going beyond the desired heading or the turn response. Okay, here's the turn response. Rudder area ratio is equal to rudder area over what we call the L uh, length between perpendiculars and then the tango. Factors in turn response, you have the rudder dimensions, rudder angle, ship speed, or the Bernoulli's, and the coxswain ability, or the helmsman. Ibig sabihin, timunil. Okay, when you say coxswain ability, or that is the steerage, no? kung sino yung nag-steer or nagtitimon. Ship speed, of course, you have to reduce the speed in order to uh, reduce Bernoulli's effect. Rudder angle, it is the response. Rudder dimensions, given na yan, uh, ng ng ship specific mo. Kung ilan yung length, at saka kapal, at saka beam nung width ng rudders mo. At yung angle, maximum angle na kaya niyang ibigay. Okay? Now, slow speed maneuverability. The ability to maneuver at slow speed or less than 5 knots. A ship requires some level of maneuverability at low speeds in canals, approaching harbor entries, but as speed drops, so too does rudder control. Typically requires some additional methods to aid turning and positioning and slow speeds. So other rudders, meron mga twin screws or lateral bow thrusters. Some vessels, they have bow thrusters or even stern thrusters. Or while they are berthing, they are equipped with vessels or tugs and other uh, mooring boats, for example. Okay. Rotational thrusters or specialized platforms. So 
So yun yung mga uh, yun yung mga uh, gamit kapag slow speed maneuverability. Okay? Maneuverability trade-off, stability, tendency to stay in a straight line, and maneuverability, ability to easily depart from a straight line opposing one another. Large rudder can help both but increase the drag. It is not possible to independently optimize each. Okay, good response conflicts with straight line directional stability. Okay. So that is all about uh, shallow water effect. Any questions, class? None, sir.